What's up, y'all? Dr. Tochi here. I was in the process of filling out some onboarding information for this palliative care program that I'm going to be starting for fellowship this year in July. And one of the things that actually sparked me to make this video was one of the portions of the actual onboarding process was to upload my step one, two, and three. So because of that, that kind of sparked me to think, hmm, maybe I should share my experience taking step one, two, and three. It's been some time since I've done step one, maybe Ooh, maybe like six, seven years since I've done it. I think that a lot of people don't really give advice or what the actual experience is before going to take step one. And I made a lot of mistakes and there's a lot of things that I wish that I could have did differently if I were to take step one all over again. I actually have a sister in med school right now and she's preparing to take her step one exam. So I'm also making this to kind of help her out as well. Then I'm gonna make this into a three part series. This video is gonna be talked about for step one and then I'm gonna make a step two and a step three video later on for this channel as well. So let's first jump into my preparation strategy for step one, which I felt like was the probably the worst strategy that I probably could have done for the actual preparation process. And it's because of that actual failure of that preparation process that I've actually revised it and now have a better strategy whenever preparing for an actual USMLE or licensing exam here, moving on for my medical career. What I was actually doing is that I actually had a dedicated, maybe like two to three month time period of when I was actually preparing for step one. And that included watching videos for boards and beyond, watching videos for pathoma, sketchy for microbiology and pharmacology, as well as doing questions from UWorld. And at that time, I put too much emphasis onto the actual reading, as well as watching the videos when preparing for the actual exam in that dedicated period when I was actually going to take my exam before moving on to my third year of medical school. The reason why I believe that was a huge issue is because I was going over the information so much that I was like, I can't feel comfortable doing these questions until I actually go through all the material and feel comfortable. However, that was a little bit of a paradox because you don't actually know the information until you can actually answer it in a test-like format. You can say everything that you want out loud, but if you can't answer a question on whatever subject that it is, then all you're studying is really all for naught. So my main advice for you guys based off all of that is that if i were to redo the whole process when taking step one i would actually start the questioning process beforehand a lot earlier so this means that i probably would have started doing questions during my second year of medical school maybe like halfway through and start breaking in those questions and actually making sure that I'm getting comfortable doing questions in a test-like format. And this is not only in a timed mode to actually simulate exam day, but also in full blocks and increasing those blocks the closer and closer that I got to the actual exam day. So that was one of the main mistakes that I made was that I was doing a little bit too much content review, whether it's going through those videos, reading, and I wasn't doing enough or de dedicating enough time to actually studying for those exams by doing those questions. So the questions, questions, questions is what I would really emphasize for you guys, especially for step one, which I feel personally was the hardest of all three step exams. If you guys have already taken step one, two or three and feel differently, I'd like to hear your reasons why in the comment section down below. Step one, I felt like was a lot of memorization and yes, you can memorize as much as you want, but you have to know how to answer it on a question and you actually have to prepare a lot more than you would think ahead of time. Now, one of the other things that I would actually say in terms of the actual exam day, out of all the three exams that I took, step one, two, and three, step one was probably the worst that I did. And a lot of it was, you know, this is, you know, a new exam type of format that I was actually doing. When I actually finished step one and moved to the other exams, I kind of had experience doing exams that were lasting this amount of time. It was hours upon hours upon hours. I think it was around seven, eight hours for the exact exam day, including breaks. But I just had never taken an exam for that long. So one of the main things that I was struggling with on exam day was the actual mental fortitude and strength to be able to persevere and push throughout that exam day. That's something that I would actually advise for you guys as well. And it's the reason why I advocate for such time modes when you're actually doing questions, because you have to not only prepare to 
know how to answer these questions in a question like format, but also you have to know how to be good at time management, not only time management, but also how to mentally keep yourself engaged throughout the whole exam, because you start off with all this energy doing really well and feeling really strong to be able to get through the entire exam. But once those first two blocks go away, that's when it starts kicking. That's when you start feeling tired. That's when you start feeling mentally drained. And it's tough because a lot of the times the strength or the difficulty of the actual exam doesn't get harder throughout the whole exam. So if you were to do, say, the third or fourth block first, then you probably would have done a lot better as opposed to when you're just doing the first two blocks for this exam. So that's the biggest thing that I would say is that you really have to prepare your studying mechanisms to not only prepare yourself on how to answer the questions, but how to build your actual you know, stamina to be able to last through the entire exam. The way that I would actually ameliorate that issue is that as you get closer and closer and closer to the exam, continue to start building up your tolerance on doing more and more questions. What I did is that every week I would try to answer like, you know, another question block and I try to map it out until my actual exam day. That way, by the time I get to exam day, I would have had like two to three weeks of already doing all these blocks in a row. That way I would have that mental stamina to be able to persevere on the actual exam day. That was all of my preparation process. Now I kind of want to talk about my experience on the actual exam day. And, you know, like I said before, this is the first time that I was taking an exam of such significance and importance. And I feel like I really let the nerves of that really get to me on that day. And one of the things that I would say for you guys when preparing for this exam is really not psyching yourself out and really doing all that you can to actually improve how you feel for actual exam days. And what I, do I mean by that? What you can actually do for one, go check out the site that you're actually going to do the exam day on. So you really want to know what is the environment like? What is the temperature like in the actual exam testing center? Is it hot? Is it cold? Do I need to bring a jacket? Do I need to wear something a little bit more light? How is the actual noise environment of the actual testing center? Is there construction going on outside? Is there, you know, a lot of like birds or a lot of like animals? Is it well sound insulated? You want to know all these things beforehand because my testing center I didn't check it out beforehand and there was a lot of construction going on. I picked it because it was the closest center to my house and I was like, oh, it's the closest and I don't want to have to be driving far for my actual exam day. So I didn't really think about going to actually go check out the exam site. And I really regret that to that day. And because of that, there were a couple of components that were going on the actual exam day with all the noise and all of that. Yes, you can wear like, you know, the earmuffs and they give you like all that stuff to close your ears, but it's never actually the same. And you still kind of do hear those things. So you really want to make sure that the testing environment is suitable for you need so you can actually persevere on that exam. And the reason that you don't do bad in the exam is not because of all these things going on outside of what you actually studied. Two, doing a little bit of research into the foods that you should be eating, the amount of water that you, be, you should be drinking, the amount of coffee you should be drinking. I'm not really a huge like coffee guy. I try to you know, try to over prepare. And I did make coffee that day and I was drinking coffee throughout the day, but that made me a little bit more jittery. And I felt myself like my heart racing. And I was like, oh, I, have, I don't really drink coffee like that. Why am I drinking on exam day? And that, you know, was something that I was noticing, you know, internally that probably would have affected me a little bit less if I didn't do that on the actual exam day. I still would have had the nerves. I probably would have had like a racing car throughout the entire day, but that extra bit of caffeine really did not serve me. So if you're a coffee person, by all means, do your coffee, but drink it in moderation throughout the entire exam because you don't want to drink so much of it, become jittery, and then crash in the later portion of the exam. Also, making sure that you're eating foods that don't lead to huge insulin spikes. At least for me, I, I tend to eat a little bit more than normal. So when I actually get to exam days, I actually ate like a pretty heavy meal, like maybe halfway through the exam. And it was fine for like that block after lunch, but the later blocks, I was struggling to keep my eyes open the whole time. I was struggling on that last block and I, I did not do too well on that last block. I just know it. I just know it. Pro tip for those of you guys that I, not even just for step one, but for other exams as well. Instead of allowing a block to end and just clicking it and ending that section, if I had like five, 10 minutes left, what I would actually do is that if I had like five, 10 minutes left in a, an actual block before ending it and going on to break, I would just lay my head there, rest, and allow myself to decompress. 
That way it doesn't utilize my actual break time and instead it's utilizing the actual block time. And that was something that I felt like was really nice for me to have like a moment for me to decompress, relax, and just chill before moving into my break and moving on to the next block. So that's something that you really want to do just to kind of keep yourself, you know, mentally rested and not feeling like you are, you know, feeling overwhelmed by just, you know, what you just did on that block. One of the other things that I would say as well, which is just general test taking chips and strategies is that if you guys are doing these questions, the worst thing that you can do is answer a question and change your answer. And this is something that really went into, you know, the kind of the build of you world that I really appreciated is that you world tracks what you're actually changing for your answer. So if you change it from incorrect to correct, if you change it from correct to incorrect or incorrect to incorrect, you can actually track to see how often you're doing that. And my general rule of thumb is that if I choose an answer, I'm not even looking back at that question because I don't want to change that question. So if I am reading through a question, I don't know what the answer is and I didn't feel comfortable choosing something, then I will skip that questions and come back to it later. I'm not going to choose an answer and then move on because oftentimes your first answer is usually the most correct answer. And the worst thing that you can do, and you'll see it on your, your world exams is when you choose the correct answer and then you go back, you second guess yourself and you change it. And it's actually the incorrect answer. Those ones pierce the soul. They hurt when you do that because you're like, I knew that was the right answer. Why did I shoot myself in the foot and move it to the incorrect answer? So if you don't know the answer or if you don't know what answer to choose, do not choose an answer choice. Come back later after you've done other questions. And sometimes you get triggered to realize what the right answer is by answering other questions because because in the back of your mind, your mind is working on that question, trying to figure out what's going on. So that is usually my analysis that I would say and some of my advice I would say when you're actually answering the question on the exam day and then utilize the cross out function try to narrow down your answer choices to two answers uh, I believe they give like four to five answer choices for step one so narrow it down use a strikeout option and use that to make an educated guess if you really don't know what the answer is even after skipping it and coming back these are all the things that I wish that I really would have done because I know that I changed a lot of answers. And when I actually went to go look up after the exam to see like, oh, what was the right answer for that? I was just like so floored by how many questions that I changed from the correct answer to the incorrect answer. So overall, kind of reflecting back on my step one experience, I do feel like this is probably the worst experience that I had just because of all of those factors that I mentioned below. But there's so many small things that you should be doing on the actual exam day, preparing for the actual exam day that you should be thinking about that I mentioned in this video that I feel like would go a long way to helping you guys who are actually taking step one. So that is all my advice for you guys that are taking step one. If you guys already took step one, go ahead and join the community and put a comment in the comment section down below and give advice to your fellow medical colleagues and drop a like on this video if you guys enjoy this video as well. I'll be dropping my step two experience on another day and give you guys my experience on taking step two and what I feel like was helpful for the actual exam. And then also I'll drop one for step three in the future as well. So I'll see you guys later. Peace, Dr. Tochi, and we out.